Hi, beautiful people, and welcome to Why We Believe. The Word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by mm -hmm. the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. I'm showing. And I'm Rhonda. Today we have a beautiful guest showing. Yes. But before we introduce her, mm -hmm. I must say that our friend Briggs is having his first concert. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Elias Briggs. Yeah presents a rebirth a reboot mm -hmm. a musical journey and place to be is pine haven sda auditorium tell them when the date 18th of august yes at 5 p.m mm -hmm. yes so make sure and acquire your tickets soon tickets goes only at 100 dollars mm -hmm. and if it is you want to contact them Feel free to contact them on 303 8144 mm. right? Don't worry, the flyer will be up on the screen. Make sure and acquire your tickets very early. Yeah. Elias Briggs, and they have some beautiful or powerful singers. I think Bijan will be there. Oh, yes, Bijan will be there. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. Elias Briggs. We have uh, Gerard Nurse, mm. we have Selwyn Jordan, we have Carla Watkins and her <laughs> DJ will be there. And of course, Luanda Moore. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. don't miss it. Remember, save the day, the 18th of August, 5 p.m. at the Pine Haven SDA Auditorium. See Feel you there? Yes. Show me buy course. any tickets, yeah? No, no, Get any tickets. Okay. We'll see you there. <laughs> All right. So, see you there. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Elias, on yeah. this concert. Yes, so we look forward to it. By God's grace, of course, we will be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get so, into our guest today. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. I'm so happy that she's here. But before we do, mm -hmm. let's pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you once again, oh God, for the way in which you have been bringing your people together. Amen. We thank you for the way in which you love us with this love we cannot understand. Mm. But today we say thank you. Yes. We thank you for bringing Jillian here. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, for continuing to strengthen her. And we pray even as she gives her testimony that somebody would be strengthened. Amen. Somebody who may be losing Amen. hope may come to believe and understand the God that Jillian serves, the God that we serve, and the God that most of us serve. Yes. Father, we ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit would rest and abide with us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So, <laughs> welcome, Thank Sister you. Jillian <laughs> Adams. How are you? I am fine. Thank nice. You. Great. So great to have you. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. for having me. You know, um, well, as usual, as usual, we normally like uh, our interviewees to Tell us something about uh, about yourself. You know, tell us the viewers would like to know also who is Jillian Adams. Mm, okay, um, a humble child of God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Um, I grew up in a family of ten. Well, okay, ten children. Wow. Okay. All right, and um, the two parents of course, both mom and dad. They um, they lived up until I was twenty two. Then they passed. Oh, All right. Yeah. So we had a really nice um, country experience. Mm -hmm. okay. We grew up in the country. And um, um, I am one of four girls. And there were six boys. boys. Yeah. Um, 
very you know like a very relatively quiet family not mm. anything to write home about except one very dramatic brother but he <laughs> um he committed suicide wow. um, but um I'm, i know it's not about him today mm -hmm. but that would have also affected us you know yeah of but course. At the, when, the time when it happened i was already an adult but i think that would have affected the things that happened after, after. yeah mm -hmm. because that really impacted our family in a very dramatic way mm -hmm. all right um i am in education and um i have a, a staff of, of approximately 50 persons who work with me and um i'm just a pretty easygoing person i love drama <laughs> and um i'm a little eclectic when it comes to music because i like most genres of music. Um, of course, I love my spiritual vibes, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah, keep yeah. me going and so on. So, yeah, that's in a nutshell. You, you can see that you're, you're very easygoing. You know, even in the first encounter, you, you can feel that vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of calm spirit, you know, and bless you, Lord. That could only be the Holy Spirit in you. Thank you. That, that, that's that true. Causes that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well. But before, before, um, I can know it's about you, but I just uh, I'm a bit curious. Yeah, um, your brother. Mm -hmm. That was before your, your parents died, or after? yeah. Um, he died actually. <laughs> he'd been. Um, you know, they, they always have a. I don't want to say the black chicken in family. Yeah. Yeah. He was always the one who was a little different, a little bit more radical, oh, okay. and so on. And um, yeah, that happened before, before my my parents passed. Okay, and I think that would have spiraled a lot of things that happened in the family right. afterwards. No so it's, 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 you know, yeah. it's um, interesting that you ask that, yeah. you know, and and I, I leave it all up to God today to, you know, to do the speaking so that even yeah. as you ask that question, I believe it was something prompted by the Holy wow. Spirit. Yeah. Right. Bless you, Lord. Bless the Lord. So your, um, your early teenage life or early childhood, how um how was how, that? yeah how, um, how that was, was it was that normal. was cool <laughs> yeah. um after, after all we grew up in the country that's yeah. down in princess Tong. some people um because they hear tongue is think it's tongue but yeah. i know people who pass the carony bridge and know that it's country <laughs> <laughs> and um <laughs> um we we if we had we climbed trees suck mango See, that's you. Yeah, 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 yeah. oh yes all right okay. yeah, yeah, that's so that's 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 go so um, i'm high up in the diamond tree it was really nice i remember things that um stood out to me that i remember so dearly is that um we would go to the back of the yard where the coconut tree was and there was this big fat stump and we would lie back on it and look at the the clouds and say um like you know um the shepherd going home with the sheep and then you look at the different shapes yes yeah, 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 yeah. and we thoroughly enjoyed growing up I, in the country i think that, that? that was a certain age group that you used to do that, that? yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah that that was the country experience the teenage experience you know so that was good mm -hmm. um my father was very strict okay yeah very strict and very dramatic so that he didn't say anything just like you know, move that from there mm -hmm. or do that. He was very dramatic. So everything had a different edge mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I remember out of, um, we always said that um, all of us, uh, I'm going to say unfortunate, we got a little bit of that. So I'm a little dramatic. Too. We just said you like drama. <laughs> so yeah, it, it yeah. stems in the family. Yeah. So let me ask you this though. You all were always Christians? I or? grew up, um, I met my parents at uh, Seventh Adventist. But I didn't um, know my parents were really going to church. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. once or twice and so on. But I, I met them as seven Adventists. And we as children, they would have sent us or, you mm -hmm. know, one or two times when they would have gone and so on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. We always had um, spiritual conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do this and you shouldn't do that because, you know, God and so on. And, mm -hmm. and I think that would have steered me in my secondary school life mm. when people were experimenting yeah um i always was reminded because of how people brought up that if you try anything god yeah. senior mm -hmm. so that stopped it yeah. 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 yeah 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 that was that was it there if if you tried anything god will see you and yeah yeah so, that, so as you're on your um, 
the secondary school days. How, how was it in secondary school? Do you have a, did you have a, a lot of peer pressure, that stuff? Or, you know, because these days, mm. a lot of teenagers having some real peer pressure issues. Yeah. Did you have that? And if you, if you had that, how basically you, you handle those situations? I think, um, again, because of the time that that I became baptized, mm -hmm. um, was at 14 years old. At 14. Right? Okay. I don't know. It, there was a crusade, and and I remember um, going to the crusade, and I, I, I never had reservations about surrendering to God. Mm. I never did. I just, I wanted the typical life of... Yeah. A surrendered child of being a surrendered child of God, yeah. mm -hmm. um, of you know, um, looking to with the expectation to have a family later on in life and perhaps be a teacher, and and um, you know, so that the temptations that the average teenager really would have had, I had it, mm. but because I was freshly baptized yeah. at 14, mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't tempted and like like they would have been under pressure. Yeah. Yes, I'm under pressure, but um, I, because we were well-grounded mm -hmm. when we we were studying in church, we were very involved in, in AY, we were involved mm. in um, Sabbath school, my sisters and I and so yeah. on. So you find that it, was, it wasn't, um, wasn't tough. Yeah. combating so many things that they are combating and I, I i prefer every child that they would have that kind of foundation because that is what is going to determine these many decisions yeah, yeah i remember right. one school i was at I, the um i was older i wasn't 14 anymore i was i was past 16 and i remember mm. um friends influencing you to to cut school to go and watch movies mm. colorful movies mm. Mm. all right and um it was it wasn't um I mean you want to be popular, you want to, to, to be known and all this kind of thing, but I just remember telling the girl and they would have sent a girl to ask me because they the body wouldn't come to your face and ask yeah. you. So send a friend. And um I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested because I was that said a lot. I was enjoying my spiritual life. It was wonderful, you know. So um I encourage parents. Mm. To, to to have their children listen to the word of God, not just attend church, but listen. Yeah. Because that's going to be the determining factor when a, the temptation comes. Yeah. yeah so I, I love I love yes. how you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of times, even sometime this week, I was speaking with a young lady and she was saying that she went to church because it was just the thing to do was the thing that to her do. parents went and she just went so at some point she fell out but thank god she came back yeah you know and what you just said there the foundation yeah. is so yeah. important yeah. in keeping you you know and I, I bless the lord for that i i love how you spoke to the parents allow them to know that their foundation and yeah. even mm -hmm. with the foundation the parents have to showcase that they love the Lord yeah. who they say they yeah, love yeah, yeah. Yeah. and they Definitely. believe in what the, he says he can yeah. do because many a times you will find people telling the children to go to church but you're not leading by example no. yeah. you're saying don't do this but they're only seeing you doing certain things yeah. when you're at church but when you're home you're a different person so you know that the foundation yeah. is, is really really important yeah. you know and well I too I, that foundation I love, I love that but mm -hmm. you know I, I kind of downplay even the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. You know, just actually keeping you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as Rhonda said, just the, the the parents actually, the example of the parents basically enforce the power of the Holy Spirit. So you know, they they would be doing and basically setting that example and yeah. making sure that you walk the path that they required to, to walk and the Holy Spirit took over. Mm -hmm. It helped you uh resist the enemy. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Because although you were um you attempted just like everybody yeah, else mm -hmm. but yeah you resisted you stand firm and the holy spirit truly kept you and that was great yeah that was great so i mean after that that peer pressure with with the when they send the other girls yeah. that come and ask you yeah. and all of that <laughs> and they get a no i mean that was just one time yeah. you know but some people face with it 
every you know that might be one but all through the the the, um, the school life or whatever or even when the yeah all through the school life the, the face with that did that pressure continued um, or it was just that time that no it, you you have pressure you know mm -hmm. but um Foundation. i chose but, who i chose um to associate with persons I, right. I saw going in a particular direction. Yes, that is right? a, yeah. And I, I for me, that. when the, you know, I, and because I'm going somewhere, mm -hmm. Go ahead. for me, when the pressures of life at, as a teenager, you know, you talk about fashion and you talk about boys and you talk about the opposite sex. That's a big thing mm -hmm. in yeah. a teenage yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because of the, the foundation, yes. you know, that we, when we, um, we, well, besides the strict, strict upbringing, but because of the the kind of um, foundation we also had in the church, we were mm -hmm. very close as a church. It was a small company up in Lengua. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, I remember brother and sister Wilson, I don't know if it's okay for me to call names. Of course, right? yeah. Right? But they were the, the driving force behind the group. Right? Yeah. And they had a lot of children themselves. And I remember... I, 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 I know Brother Wilson would have passed on, but Sister Wilson is still around. And I know God has blessed them and continue to bless her because they would have kept us as children, you know, and so on. And it's not that the, the, the pressures didn't come, mm -hmm. right? But I remember um, because of that foundation, mm -hmm. the issues with boys and temptation who are around my age, they were no match for me. They mm. they they couldn't come around yeah, me. Yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah. tie me up because mm -hmm. again, we were thinking on a different level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I love that again. Mm. Because how you carry yourself too. Yeah. Persons would know if they can come to you or not to know. Yeah. As a young woman, how you carry yourself. I, I don't want to song bias because sometimes people carry themselves well and, and men still come. Yeah. But but they would have a, a keen idea of I wouldn't even say bother. Yeah. There's You know? <laughs> I wouldn't even say bother. I guess that is what they say. Yeah. 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 But not only that, you see the, the, the fact that uh, who you associated yeah. itself mm -hmm. with. Yes, it's true. That's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who you associated true. itself with too. And it's so important. You know, it even reminds me in my early days to same way, you know, um, I lost a lot of friends because, mm -hmm. you know, I decided to go on a different path. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they still talk to me and stuff. But, yeah, you know, so I, I understand that clearly. Mm -hmm. So, after school, school completed <laughs> and it went back to climbing trees. Because <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> yeah. at, I don't know if they are going too fast, but at, no, go ahead. you know, be doing the, the, the things that um very, very involved in church. I think yeah. our experience was home and church, church and home. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were heavily involved in what was taking place. Right. We, yeah. I, um, I'd write skits. And the whole okay. church, we will all get involved. And we, we do that skit. We'll probably do it at a different location. We'll visit a church. Um, I, I, I was a superintendent at, um, from early. Mm -hmm. And um, because that natural thing that God would have placed in me with mm. writing and so yeah. on. So everything was very dramatic. Everything was, mm. you know, different and, and, and exciting. And I love that. So that there wasn't um, the kind of distraction. I just wanted to, to, to get into the, the world of work. I went to Southern Academy after mm -hmm. my experience in secondary oh. school and I went to Southern Academy and so on. And, um, you know, looking to, to, to get settled in life. I remember... And Whiter Program had just started. Oh, yes, at that all. Whiter <laughs> Program had just started. And, um. Chin, why shake him up? All of us, that too. All of us. But, but, yeah. we look good for our age. Thank God. Uh -huh. And, um, <laughs> I remember going to do this thing. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I remember I was in a travel agency having, um, a job, um, training experience. Mm. And, and I get into where the fact was that, um, no, 22 years, 22 years old, and liking myself, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere in life, I'm, yeah. you know, yeah. and I remember um, there was a crusade up in Lengua, a big crusade, because there was a pastor from India had come, and 
at that time when that was happening, um, I think the brother would have committed suicide. He was acting up. He was getting one note. He was smoking weed and he was behaving mm -hmm. naughty. And we had some friends who also attended church and very involved and so on. So we would go sometimes and stay on the weekend. They would go to church with us. We'll go to um to church from by them and so on. We'll stay and we'll have church at home and so on. And I remember um not being in church for weeks, one, two, three months. And we decided to be going to visit up there. Went back home and we're going to visit up there. No, I'm talking about whatever was happening with him. Yeah. Right? I think um, the word you'll call is manic depressive at the term, right? But we didn't know it. We just saw it must be really yeah. Yeah. miserable and really naughty. And um, so when we went to visit, uh, they know me, monologues, drama, and so on. That's what I do. Um, I was asked to do a piece, and I did it. In the crusade, the mm -hmm. afternoon, you know, in the afternoon, yeah. the crusade, the kind of, mm -hmm. the kind of everybody program is that kind of thing. Yeah. So I did a um, presentation. And when I was finished, um, of course, I went about my business and I did not know, I did not know at that time that the person who was to become my husband had came and looked at me behind stage and he went and inquired about me, who is that person and, mm -hmm. and what have you. No, he's 10 years older than me. Hmm. He's 10 years older than me. And he saw this young person, energetic, and mm -hmm. probably as far as he was concerned, um, talented. Mm -hmm. And his intention was to have this person. Yeah, yeah. And um, actually, he said that to me After. afterwards. Yeah, he did say that to me afterwards. So I, I don't know if I lost no, train of my thoughts. But um, I had started to do this thing down at one of the travel agencies in San Fernando. Mm -hmm. And I was still educating myself and what have you. Yeah. And then this, um, you know, this character came in hmm. and my life changed hmm. dram dramatically or drastically. Sure. And so on. And that, that spared my life into a different... Um, experience that I will mm. share with you all. All right. So, you know, you, you said something there that you said that that character came. So we know that something went wrong. But there are a lot of young ladies looking on. Yeah. So I, I want you to specify some of the things that you saw that you may not have taken yes. notice of. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. of the red flags. Yeah. And um, Boy, let, let's, let's, flags. let's, okay, let's, yeah. let's get into that. Let's, let's find out mm. what happened. Right. I don't know if you have neon red, but I saw neon red and I ignored <laughs> wow. it. You know, like, um, I remember my first conversation with him would have been, um, I was talking to a young man and, uh, and I, I just want to say this, uh, um, he had recently come into the church, 10 years okay. old. He was only what you would call a baby. A baby. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was another young man closer to my age, and he was talking to me, a nice young man. And I remember um, with his years of experience and what have you, he somehow pushed the guy out of the conversation, and he took over the conversation. And I don't know how it happened. It just happened mm -hmm. so quickly, mm -hmm. it, so skillfully, mm. that the guy just, um, just melted away. And um, he took over. Hmm. And, 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 and I'm sitting here now and I'm processing it. And I know that was a red flag. Yeah. Right? Because it was not it was neither courteous nor yeah. sensitive. Yeah. But, you know, at that age, I don't know. Eh? Um, the devil would not have been able to, to have the younger ones um, closer to my age penetrate my thinking. But yeah. I think um, because of his... His experience and, and whatnot. And because mm -hmm. there was a, a level of, um, you know, cheekiness on your side. Oh, I am um, getting the attention of someone, um, 10 years older. Yeah. Than older, me. yeah so I, I, I was disarmed by that. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So what well, that's red flag. Number one. Um, there was this, um, you know, this kind of bravado that he had, you know, a cockiness that he had. 
that's that I will never be attracted to. Mm -hmm. But yet, yet still, still, because again, I was flattered by the fact that my I was 10 years younger, that caught mm -hmm. me off guard, mm -hmm. you know? So there were, there were um, signs it, to my brothers who would have done the investigation. Mm -hmm. And they said to my father, that is not a good person for her. Wow. And um, and I think that's a mistake that they made. Because remember, at that age, you're kind of strong will and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you all telling me? Yeah. Well, I feel it is at all. Well, that. Yeah. And hear me now. So why you all can't give people a chance? <laughs> yeah, that was me. No, you know, when, I mean, in reality, <laughs> give people a chance, yeah. give, you know, but the reality is, this is your spiritual life you're talking about. Yeah. This is yeah. not just your physical life yeah. you're talking about. And I didn't understand yeah. that at yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just tell myself that I will pray for him and he will be a better person. Mm. So I'm telling whatever young lady right now, if you will see that sign that tells you, you can't reach him fast enough and the phone ringing and you to where he was and he didn't answer your phone and so on. Because back then we didn't have the cell phone, but I'm telling you all, if you have it happening right now, that's a big, big flag. Hmm. Because if you don't get it, it's going, to, it's going to escalate. It's going to get worse than that. I didn't have it to deal with immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we didn't have the cell phone mm -hmm. yeah. at the time. But I saw, I, um, another, another, another red flag is if you meet somebody today and they want to get married to you tomorrow. Well, we do hear about stories where it's love at first. It was not love at first sight. Mm -hmm. It was not love at first sight. Mm. For me, yeah. right? And um, that rush to get married within a month or two months, Whoa. three months. Yeah. That, well, you see, you're not seeing that. It was like, oh, you know, well, yeah. I must be, something must be right about me because he's 10 years old <laughs> than me and he's, he's into me, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you don't realize that. choices, but he wants me. Me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, and cool. um, I didn't see that. What I saw was, you know, I am my big in the dance, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then he he went intentionally to sweep me off my feet. Mm -hmm. Extravagant. I'm not talking about I don't want you know the the roses, the things that we read about. I wasn't a Mills and Booze girl, you know. Mm -hmm. I was never a Mills and Booze girl. Mm -hmm. Right? So that as, as I said, the age, the age, my age, I would not have impressed me. But when I saw my from an older person, I was like, yeah. I'm making him buy rose. He bring a rose to me. Mm -hmm. He bring a little chocolate and so on. That was the trap. Mm -hmm. And and anybody can fall into the trap. Yeah. Anybody can. Because if the devil has a design on you, just yeah. the way that God has a plan for you. Yes. And he wants you to walk into that plan. The devil has a design yeah. for you, you know. Yeah. And if you realize that that group not going to get you, they're going to send Seven somebody to you send the next demon. Yeah. Not yeah, 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 yeah. A demon no, demon but I understand. Demon. Especially yeah. when he see there's potential and there's talent yes. and there's ways in ways in which God could use you. Yes. He comes. He comes. And you know, like now, I regret those years that I always feel like I lost. But I know that it really wasn't, I don't know, I, I learned. Mm -hmm. Right? But I regret the years that God could not have used me the way that he should have used me. Yeah. You know, I... I love young people. I love to see them expressing themselves and excelling and, you know, mm -hmm. and I felt I could have done so much more in my younger years. And I didn't because of that, because when he got his reins on me and he got his, his claws into me, what he did was he started to pull me away from everybody. Buddy. He started to pull me away from the church, everybody and started, you know, forming wedges to ensure that this one will become angry and that one will pull away and so on right so um hmm. before you before you go there Jillian, i i must say god is using you now yeah. you I know because there, there there is some young woman that would look at this testimony hmm. yeah. and understand that it's not just about this physical relationship yeah. It's about the spiritual relationship and the devil would use anybody and do anything to break your connection with Christ. Yeah. And, you know, I thank God for you sitting here today and, and speaking about these things because so many young women fall into the trap. You know, Sean would always say, the devil knows what you want. Yes. He knows that you want a car. He knows that you want a boyfriend. He knows that you want to go on trips and he would bring in that demon 
I would say. For real. He would bring him pull in and yeah. pull you away. And next thing you know, when you, you, are, you are accustomed reading the word, you are accustomed reading the, write, the writings of Ellen G. White. And then you're so far from that now. You're like, where am I? Yeah. How I reach there. How I yeah. Yeah. You know? And I, I thank God for you today to, to allow some young woman to understand, to see not just physically, but spiritually yeah. what the devil is doing. It's not worth it. Yeah. Your, you see that spiritual well-being? Mm -hmm. There's nothing more important than that. Yeah. Right? You tell yourself, well, okay, if he's a mature person, well, you know, he, that maturity means security. Mm. And I was, there was, um, mature in age does not necessarily mean mature in, you know, in mindset. Yes. And so on. And that was the case. That was the ideal case. Mature in age, but not in yeah. mindset. Mm -hmm. All right, and that would have been, that would have caused such a drastic upset in my life. But you know, this 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 evening is an opportunity to say, you know, again, why you why believe. we believe that yeah. that that God, I thank Him, from the Lord, I thank you so much for for sparing my life. I remember in my experience, mm -hmm. and I want to tell you all, go ahead, shamefully, twenty years experience in my 20 years of experience in um in this situation i would have seen um you know some ugly things i would have i would have, i would have um seen a gun pull on us because of his arm hmm. because of how he did his business with people open a door somebody open a door on us and pull a gun and 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 i don't know why that was happening i don't know i i don't know if, I don't know if it's if I was shell shocked, I wasn't frightened. I was just stunned. You know, I would have had experiences where um, he would have, you know, taken a bottle of pitch oil and run me down to straight on me. And um, I would have had the experience of, you know, anger, so much anger. He was so angry that he would take a nice pick and stab up the bed and, you know, promise you that that would have been you wow. or driving his vehicle and stop in the middle of the highway and oh that one used to mess with me bad that one used to mess with me bad because i always envision a vehicle coming from behind and Pitted. taking us out and so on and i was um i was sharing the experience of one of those times when he would stop the car and going so bad and i remember he he picked me up by my sister a sunday morning um by the roundabout in barataria there and he started off calm as usual. And it, there's, not, there's nothing and everything that would have triggered. Hmm. Get to know and so on. And stop the car and get to know. Oh, do, 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 do. And um, he stopped the car and he came out of the car. Right? And I don't know. The MacGyver inside of me jumped on the other seat and locked the car. Mm -hmm. So he was outside the car. But when he realized what I was doing and I... um. And he goes to pull the door. I lock the car at the same time. And I was like, you yeah, have to do something. I have to follow through with what it is. Mm. You're there, there. Mm -hmm. So I drove off the car. And while I'm heading down the highway, we live in Cuba at the time. Mind you, I will let you know, at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, I live almost everywhere in Trinidad. Because every year, every six months, every two years, we would move. That was part of the, the, the whole thing. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm on my way down the road. And I, I said, well, he have his wallet, he will find his way home. And I use it vernacular deliberately. And um, when I looked, his wallet was in the car. Oh boy. I said, well, all right, he will call a friend. When I looked, his phone was in the car. <laughs> I said, well, it's had trouble in this thing tonight. I don't know if I would live this Whoa. Thing. Yeah, so his, his, his phone was in the car. His wallet was in the car. And I was like, how am I going to live through this? Because when I reach home, mm. I drove and I got home. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just reach home. And when I reach home, not long after, Gentleman pull up in a car, right? And somebody, I don't know how he would get out, but, um, and you know, when I would respond and defend myself at times, he would go right down into mm. a calm. Yeah. But the next time, he would be triple wow. what he, um, what he would normally be. Mm. I remember of one of the places we lived in Lunch Park. I remember looking through the window and I saw him coming in and 
Um, and Lord, and I said, Lord, which is I do, Lord? Like I was bad and I, I mean, you started asking some mm -hmm. questions. I was to say like, Lord, like you like him more than me mm -hmm. because I pray and, and we were, we were out of church. We were out of church. Um, he was running fat. He was promoting fat and, and so on. And there I am going to play cash and all this kind of thing. And I remember um, looking through the window and I saw him coming in, quarreling with himself, like that guy no one. And I was like, Lord, what am I going to be dealing with? I would, I would say, Father, Lord, I don't know what demon come in tonight. Mm. Basically, one that will go on quarreling for hours and hours. Because when he, he would drink, he would have the fall asleep ones. And he had the drink and quarrel for a while. And he would have the one who will be going down to 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh. And loud. Loud. And if I walk to one room, he will follow oh. me to that room. If I go to another room, he will follow me to that room. If I go to a room and turn off the lights in the room with the intention of falling asleep, he will turn back on the lights. Oh, if yeah. I turn off the light, if I turn on the lights, he will turn it off. So he will go like, okay, I will run to a room and I will lock, well, I can't lock the doctor, he will break it down. Hmm. Because he did that too, eh? Wow. So, um, so I'll go into a room and I'll turn off the light and go lie down on the bed or something like that and be like, okay. He will come in the room and turn on the light and he will continue quarreling. All right. Um, so the other reverse would be, um, I live on the light. He turn off the light. <laughs> just, 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 just to torment. Yeah. Yeah. And I would beg and I would cry and I would clean. I would be like, um, why, why, you know? And I would see him sometimes laughing, you know, like he, he, like he found pleasure in, in making me cry. Like, like, why, uh, what am I doing? You, that will worry you behaving like that you know and uh, i remember i think i we, we would have lived so many places in this life that hmm. i think everywhere we live everybody knew that that was the, the noise yeah yeah uh, yeah no you will hear my voice yeah but it was lord no let me let me just stop for a moment to say hurting people hurt people yeah and i'm saying this to, to some young lady right now eh the intention of the person, while it may have sinister aspects of it, all of us want to live a life that is, you know, joyous and peaceful and so on. But it's a hurting person that is another person. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, he grew up part of his life in an orphanage. Right. And he was very resentful. And then I would hear things like, the best woman is a dead woman. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, why would you marry a woman? You know, so that if that is the... He, the chorus you will hear him saying very very regularly another thing that he would would have done would have messed with my mind so mm -hmm. that even when we were finished there were just the the the, the, the um i would have put um like one beep on the phone as a warning when he would ring a song because he wouldn't stop mm. and that one beep will turn my whole day upside down mm. right but i back to the point of hurting people hurt people he would have lived in the orphanage he would have looked at persons who had a life that was you know blessed with both parents and so on mm -hmm. and he never had either one yes. of them he did not know who his mother was and who his father mm. was so that there was a level of resentment yeah. so when you think that person's intention was to just take you down because mm -hmm. they're angry they are hurting and they're just lashing yeah. out yeah 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 you know and that's why we want to tell the young ladies on them you think that you can make him better you can't make him better only god yes. can make him better you yeah. cannot make him better hmm. it might be the greatest intention in your heart you could pray and fast for it but if that if you are on equally yoked you're not going anywhere except a wrong in circles i remember sometimes i would be like because he was a contractor mm -hmm. he'd get big contracts with ministries and and so on but he will never have a cent hmm. because he was he would spend mm -hmm. and, and, and throw it and, and not pay his workers and stuff. And I remember I said to him one time, I say, you know, you just going like this, relax on them, you know. I say, you, you keep going wrong in circles and you're not getting it. All right? But I went so far. Let mm. me go back to the first day when he hit me. Mm. I did not know. Many of us go to the altar. And I'm saying it to some young lady. You do not know the young man. You do not know the guy. Guy, you do not know the girl. Mm -hmm. And I remember 
him smell like cigarette smoke. And that was, of course, I was appalled. I yeah. was like, you, um, you the smoke? Maybe I, maybe it was the wrong question. Mm. How are you smelling a cigarette smoke? Mm -hmm. And the, the first question was an innocent one. I am smelling cigarette smoke and you, you, where you get smoke? You, do you smoke? No, you don't smoke. So I said, but you're smelling a cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, somewhere between that and the next person would have been, you can't be smelling a cigarette smoke if you wasn't a wrong smoke. Mm -hmm. Was one solid slap. Wow. That was the first. And that wasn't even, that was even a month after, you know. <laughs> it was even a month after. That was like within the, 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 the it was less than a month after. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, and when I got a slap, as I said, eh, apart from being a very dramatic um, person, I was a confident young lady. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, I always told myself, no man going to put their hands on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some young lady is saying this mm -hmm. this evening. You know, she's saying like, oh, you know, um, I see some ways inside of him, you know, but I go pray it out. <laughs> or you might be saying, um, no, he wouldn't do that with me. Mm -hmm. That, that's usually it. I ain't seen that. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, I yeah. have a problem. Seriously, <laughs> you have a problem. Like if you, you're not seeing that. But, but I mean, you know, they say experience is 2020 vision. But you don't want to experience 2020 vision because it's going to, it's going to cripple you and put, uh, change your life in such a way that, like me, I find like I would have wasted so many years. I regret those years. Even though I know that God was taking care of me in the midst of it. When he would have said to me, to my father, I don't agree with this. But he would have said to my brothers, they didn't agree with it. When he would have put those things to me and I was disobedient until when it started to happen, I started to like say, well, I deserve this. But wow. God, God, God is intention. He never planned for us to, 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 you know, to, to fall into the hands of abuse is a God that loves. Exactly. Right? And love is not supposed to hurt. Yeah. You know? And so that before you even make that decision, if I, if somebody had stopped me and pulled me away, I would have put, I, I, I would have fired them and go. Because you, the devil would have, would have already had me tangled up. Tangled up. You know? My yeah. mother, after my brother committed suicide in, that was around October or something like that, my mom went into, um, she got a stroke hmm. in December. Hmm. And she died wow. in January on my birthday. Wow. And because my brother, well, we, we, when that happened, you know, so what, it was a few months or something, so we didn't get a chance to get over that. And that death in itself was one of the reasons, like, um, daddy was, as I said, a more, more challenging person and mommy was the, you know, the gel. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I didn't, I'm a big woman. I don't want to deal with this here again. And I got married not because I was in love. I, I, I got married because I just wanted to get out. That's out, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted like to. I reborn something. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to to get out because I wasn't going to be, you know. Um, parents, tell your children, tell tell your daughters and your sons. Even if you're rich, and you already buy the wedding dress, mm -hmm. and you reach by the church, and the spirit of the Lord tells you, don't do it, don't do it. It is better you, you, you apologize to all of the persons you invited and tell them, listen, and they will, they will talk about it, you know, but better they talk about it yeah. and get over it and you don't live that kind of life. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, everything changes. Yeah. And I thank God, um, I'll just plug this in here, my sister, my sisters and the, in particular the last one, we were always close. Um, we are we are close knit, mm -hmm. all right. Um, and I thank God that even though he tried to to break that and so on, God would have known, mm -hmm. and he would have seen into the future that if I had made this choice, I would have needed that particular sister or my sisters, and 
there was always a holding on. Yeah. I don't know how many of you were. Sorry, color purple. Yeah, right. When when uh, the sister, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was always a hole, you know. So she was somewhere inside of the midst, mm -hmm. always, you know. I I just want to thank God again. This is an opportunity. I I, I thank God for <laughs> for sparing my life. I met people along the way who who saw me and read me on a spiritual vibe. Mm -hmm. I remember I, um I I told you I work with young people, school age and yeah. and so on. I manage a program. And I remember um, he wouldn't give me keys to where we were living everywhere, right? Everywhere he liked nice things, so always in some some area, some nice house, some way, nice apartment. And I remember he wouldn't give me the keys. So I would have to sit and wait for him in one of the in a in a, in a restaurant. So I couldn't get into the house. I couldn't get into unless the house unless he's there. Unless he was there. And wow. if he did give me the key and, and, and he fell out with me in the morning, he will change he the locks on the gate. Wow. I couldn't get into the house. Wow. Right? Um, I mean, I could laugh about it now, but there were times when I I just turned and I... I remember um, turning and just going back and going by my father. And um, which is the last place he wanted to go because that meant failure. And, you know, the thing that the, your parents would say is, yeah, you want to work it out. But they, he didn't know what was happening. Mm hmm he didn't know what was happening. He didn't know that that uh, that when I <clears throat> the last thing I would hear in the night was the worst type of expletives, huh. and the first thing you heard in the morning was the same um the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if I was on the job and he called me on the phone, the office phone, everybody would know because people like people would be like he has one on the phone, and they would know because sure. hear, rah, rah, rah. you know sure. this kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I had a my um, supervisor. I used to make fun of us. He say the rah, rah man on the phone, and I, he thought it was funny. He thought it was funny. He thought that was funny. Yeah, girl, you had no idea. Yeah, what you know. he didn't know that um, my situation was sometimes life and death situation. It was mm -hmm. as simple as I said. You know, I remember him taking a hatchet, and I don't know. Eh, um, and you know, like a chopper mm -hmm. running me down. And I remember going under um, one of the beds and him swishing, <gasps> swishing, swishing. But you know, I thought I could have gotten cut and everything. But again, I, I think again, God was obviously, obviously. Yeah. Oh, what was that? You know? Um, I remember getting my arm twisted and hearing it crack. <gasps> and going to um the hospital but of course he's there and um he's telling them that we had a beach um out in yeah, and, and then the the beach you know and she yeah. thinks so and whatnot no. and, so, and me i well listen eh, and i would have left the first time i left um i went by my one of my sisters so you went by everybody you go by the last sister first because that's the one I'm um, so, so, closest so, with. Yeah. yeah, so you go there first. Of course, we know that, so I ain't going there. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember going by the other sister, and I remember when he came to find out my aunt, the sweetest one, um, you know, I had a little, you know, misunderstanding, and um, you know, you know, you know, you sing that she like. She's gone, I ain't seen her yet. You see her? And I'm here in this conversation. Yes. Right? I'm here in this conversation. I'm going, put a, put a, book. sorry. I what, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, here in this conversation. And, um, they're saying, um, no, nah, we haven't seen her, no, and whatnot, and so on. Well, if, if I see her, tell her, and so on. And I'm there. I'm there. Listening to all of this. And then he goes. I remember going and making a report in the station. I think um there's a I know by her six four five I uh, I don't know six four five twenty eight hundred if I call the wrong number but I remember a long time you could have called that number and talked to somebody lifeline mm. a lifeline was my friend well but what he used to do is like he would he would lock me into the house as well so if he had locked me into the house no man no serious he say he lock me into the house and he will take the keys and he will go with it. And if he, depending on what mood it is, he will lock me to the house and take my phone and go with it. All right? But if he's in a relatively good mood, he will lock me in the house with, with my phone. phone. And I remember, um, you know, one of those times when um, I started fighting back. 
Um, I remember <laughs> um, he locked me into the, the oh, he locked boy. me in the house and we talk about burger proofing and all the um the exit. Mm -hmm. eh? the, the house that I burned down. Well, I would go with it. But God, <laughs> but for God. I remember <laughs> this man locked me in the house and this um and I say, I you know like and I take it, I don't it, it, you have those moments when you don't care, you know, you just like I um when you when you see like I don't care what happened because I'm saying like, Lord, why are you getting away? But I hear God saying to me, you, you, child, you are still whole. He's broken, you know. Mm. He's broken in, 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 in places that you, you don't understand. Wow. You know that I love you. Hmm. I was like, I don't want to do this, Lord. I don't want to do this. Right? Um, he, locked, he locked me inside. And, and this time I just wasn't having it. So I pick up the phone and I call him. And I said, um, you locked me inside. Where's the key for me to go outside? I can't even go to the yard. I can't even go to the porch. Hmm. I was like, where's, where's the key? Um, uh, I'm coming back there. I'm making a mistake and I put the key inside the arm. Um, hmm. In my pocket or something like that. And we had a, a huge ironing board. A man could light up on it. Mm -hmm. And I started a beat iron and board like it was a ten a pan. I started a beat iron and board. And I'm on the phone with them. Bang, 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 bang. And within uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes, he came yeah. back. Well, you can't know so far. Again, again, there was a, let, let, let me just say this eh? While it was an abusive relationship, he was afraid to lose me. Because he didn't have mom, he didn't have dad. Um, I think he had a brother. His brother died. He had a brother, a twin mm -hmm. brother. I think that's how they um he found out that he had a twin brother and he went searching for his father, looking for papers and so on to try to find. But the brother, he was um ad adopted by a family who was a large family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He ended up with a large family. So he kinda adjusted, kinda. Yeah. All right. Although he, he had some messes and stuff, well. but but he was, because it was him alone, um, a girlfriend of mine from the church um, who I met after how many years, she said, Gil, I knew when you married him, you were in for trouble because they knew they him. They knew him. And she's like, he was cray cray. He was crazy. He, 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 would, he would have had um, issues and, you know, and like when my father seen, um, I doesn't agree with me, but as I'm saying things and they're saying that this guy and so on and so on. I was like, I didn't understand the magnitude of the earthquake that was coming. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is we must learn to forgive <laughs> and we must embrace people. While all of that may be true, I was not in a position yeah. to deal with that. And yeah. because he was not whole, I, mm. I, I, I thought this was something I could have handled, but it wasn't. And again, I, if I, what the one thing I want out of this is for, the young ladies in particular, mm. to understand that charm, the Bible says deceitful, mm. you know, and um, more than anything else, if a person is not whole, and that means so many different things, spiritually, mentally mm -hmm. and emotionally yeah. they are not going to be doing you any good yeah. no i'm not saying that we we are all imperfect and the reality is we will how we will encounter in our relationships imperfection mm -hmm. and that's okay yeah yeah but there, there's there, there is a, a a depth that you don't want to go to deal with because you're not skilled enough to deal with that exactly you're not skilled enough to deal with that exactly but i didn't know and, and you know what i i'm thinking as well your parents, your father saw it, <laughs> your brother saw it. <laughs> and many a times as an older person, you would see certain things in somebody. You, you know, you, you, you love your family, you, you love your sisters, you love your nieces, you love your cousins. And you would see something that, you know, that person is mm -hmm. not for you. Know. But I, 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 I don't know, I don't know what, what it is that whenever you say it, yeah. The person seems to get angry with yeah. you because that is what they want. Mm -hmm. But sometimes take a, take a second look 
when your when your mother or your auntie or yes. your friend says mm, something about Richard and O'Kali. Mm. But Richard, you're a good one. <laughs> That's our karma man. But you know, you, you, you would see something and you would say, you know, you can't really detect what it is, yeah. but the Holy Spirit showed you. Yeah. And I warned me. And let me say this, eh? Most of the times when your somebody's coming around your family member and the Holy Spirit already showed you, that person who is coming around your family member can never look you in the eye, you know. Yeah. I'm sure he had those kind of things with, yeah. with your father and your brothers. Yeah. They can never look at you because they know that you know. Yeah. You, they know that you know their intent. But sometimes, young ladies, take, take, a, take a second look. When somebody tells you something, I mean, we, we're not judging people, but take a second look. Look, look, look for the flags. Yeah. Look for the flags. And, and, and when you see them, yeah. don't dismiss them. Yeah. Don't dismiss them. Yeah. And the thing about it is not that you're hating you know, or you're coming down on anybody, but the reality is some people have to go before you be, you be, you, you can walk with them. I love it. Yeah. You, you, you think just because they are baptized. And I'm, I'm saying this because young men and women hook up in the church and they do get married and so on. And then unfortunately, um the person may not have been at um spiritually mm -hmm. grounded yeah. they may have been there yeah, yeah. yeah but they're not there yeah, yeah. you know so that we have to be mindful of that look at a, look at persons how they they treat people mm -hmm. look at their patience level mm -hmm. look at things like that and if 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 look at their 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 level of unselfishness mm. or selfish that's a big one Yes, mm -hmm. and it tells you something. Yeah. But you see, again, um, while I think we would have been conditioned and brought up well in church and at home, you reach sometimes you reach a place, and I'll tell you this one. I'm going to go into a, a place here. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two years old, turn twenty-three, and um, you get when well, you start to become intimate when you should not be intimate. Mm. You can't think again. Yeah, when you. When you are um, no longer processing spiritually mm -hmm. and rationally, but you are now dealing with the physical, yeah. you know, um, you're going into uncharted waters that you didn't go into before, that you never went into. Mm. You're not going to be processing the same way. Yeah. So show me a young lady or a young man who, when a parent yeah. says, I don't think, I think you should rethink, I think you should pray about it, I think you should reconsider. And they don't want to hear. It's because they may have crossed a line where they're going in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to hear. And I'm saying yeah. that to somebody right mm, now. I'm sure you are. You may have crossed a line that you should not have. You are probably crossing a line that you should not. Um, the most that the person can, can do is to say, um, they can point a finger at you and probably say something. But you can still, before it gets worse than that, because... Like I said, I would sit down in restaurants waiting for him to pick me up. And sometimes that would go into night time. I'm finishing work at 3.30, <laughs> um, 4 o'clock I'm sitting there, 5 o'clock I'm there, 6 o'clock I'm there, 7 o'clock I'm there, half past 7 I'm there and push it down to 8 o'clock sometimes. Wow. I'm still there sitting. People come to meet me, they, they, they pass me, they sit down around me, they go and so on. And and that's messing with your psyche. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not imagine messing with your psyche, but as a woman, you want to come home and from work. Yeah. I want to take care of yourself and so on. Yeah. Sometimes you're in a vulnerable position and you want to get home, but you're there sitting in a restaurant. And people in them in the restaurant are saying, What's her problem yeah. every day? So she come here, she buy um, a drink and she sit down. Sometimes you don't have the money to buy the drink and you sit down there. Wow. And hours passing. Wow. And you are leaving home in the morning very early and you 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 you're going home in the night. For no reason, just because somebody is um um worried about if you get in first and you might run away, just just control. Yeah, just yeah. control. I remember we had neighbors who would have challenged them. Um, he would have he um you know those kind of persons have never kind of likable spirit about them, mm -hmm. and they would start off very nice. And I know how it goes. They're going to turn enemies just now. So people could have said one or two things about me. That woman don't talk to nobody. So it could be good for sure. Mm. That woman, um, what? She hoity toity because she just keep to herself. Uh, somebody told me that one time, but they did not know no. that I was so embarrassed. Wow. I was waiting for the, the next shoe to fall because he would be friendly and so on. And I would hear him laughing and talking with the neighbor. And I was, you know, like a count anytime, I say. Just and so. then you'll hear him and the neighbor fall out. And I was like, 
Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's like, this is just about the right time. <laughs> and you know, about a week, a few weeks and so on. God, because that's, the, his spirit is always riled up. Right? But I remember a, a co-worker of mine, as a matter, she was a supervisor to me, called me a day. She said, Julian, your name on the papers. Hmm? So I was like, oh, yes. Money, I win something. <laughs> you know, I was like, that's the first <laughs> thing I'm going to think. I was like, I win something. <laughs> I could do it some winnings here now. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, oh, God, what? I win something. I said, no, no. I feel you should stop what you're doing and go and buy your papers. But my heart started to beat fast now. Because I'm still not expecting yeah. what she go, what I'm going to we'll say. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Going over the road, there was a pharmacy. I was about my sister. Going over the road, pharmacy, getting newspaper. And yeah, I heard the channel say, if you're cutting me, I get no blood in me. I don't know what it means, mm -hmm. but it's song good to say. Mm -hmm. But I know I was so embarrassed when I read the paper. Um, the, the ad in the paper was, well, it was big. Right. In bold letters. You must not The whereabouts it. of so, so, so. My name on the papers. I'm sorry. I did not know that this man was in court. High court to be precise. People sue him. And, um, of course, when any time they can't find yeah, him, him yeah. they look at I am the person. And of course, he was a smart one, a smart cookie. When he started his business, he made me the secretary. Well, nothing wrong, I could do them. Yeah. Thing. So I signed a secretary. So I'm the person on the business. <laughs> so they found me. So the, the artist, so I pick up the phone and know I have to call. Um, call. I'm embarrassed now, yeah? I'm embarrassed because I am working with people and yes. they would have seen my name on the papers. I'm embarrassed because um when we when we were no longer attending the Adventist church, we had reached into another church. Yeah, many things happened. Wow. Twenty years you all can't even begin to understand you know. <laughs> this is only a synopsis, you know. Anyway. I was embarrassed. So no, I am um, and then um <laughs> Somebody meets me with a cut out piece of the paper and <gasps> said, I saw this. What's going on? So it was an excellent embarrassment. So everybody, all the four corners. Yeah. Everybody. So I was like, um, I called them and I asked them, um, I tried to get one to whoever and so on. And they explained to me that because I had signed as the secretary and so on. <laughs> anyway, court. You know what my mommy say? That's one of the things that we always, as a family, never wanted any part, unless you're a lawyer. Yes. Courthouse, you know. So I get my court closed, and I go into court. And this man, he's there lying to these people. You know, he had, he, he owed a gentleman, not a, a hardware, and he owed the, the man personally as well, because apparently the man, um, befriended him as well no these are people i don't know mm -hmm. if they see me on the road they probably could make me out because well this is one me but i don't know these people yeah. and they probably would not have known mm -hmm. me because i would not have been in the, going physically yeah, so. anyway i'm in court now and i'm sitting there and, and he's um i i'm here in the it's the magistrate telling him um but he, they gave him some arrangement that he was supposed to pay them every month and he was not paying these people. Mm -hmm. Other people and them realized that he was shafting them. They went this way. Mm -hmm. So I am now involved in it. I remember um, they are the my streets. Um, as I said, it's high court. This is high court. I did not pass 10,000. Hmm. I tell you, it's not, it wasn't 10,000. It was 100,000. It wasn't 200,000. It was more than $200,000. This man was sued for. And then, um, but I am, the, the long and short of that story is he has passed away because I received a call sometime during after COVID, after COVID. And they told me he would have passed away. I, I have to tell you about the exit. Mm -hmm. um, and um, somebody said that he passed away and so on. And I am left paying that. So you, uh, up to now, every single month the last how many years 
15, about 15 years now. Wow. I have been paying every single month. And I pray and I invite who, all you prayer warriors who have close connection with the Papa wow. to pray and tell God to, to make it go. And I know he is going to stop it. But I think he wants me to say this so that when it happens, I you'll, can say, you'll come back on. I will come back Why on. Why we believe. Why we believe because I know he's going to stop it. Pray for me because every single month I have to make sure and pay the lawyers. Wow. So that, you know, it doesn't go into something else. Right. But how I got away, <laughs> um, I, I haven't touched, I'll I just give the service, but I'll tell you this. It had, um, of all the years of going and coming, and I remember living downstairs of my big brother, um, but that was the longest ever, two years. But every time I would leave, he would be in a different car. He would, he would, he would, he would rent cars. He would borrow cars. He would, he would he stalk. stalk. Yeah, oh my yeah. God! I think um, he could have opened a stalking academy because he was good at it. Hmm. He would be up on you, and then you would realize, wait now, you know. And I, hmm. many times, I would go back because I feared for my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's so, it's so silly. You fear for your life, but you yeah, go back in these situation. Yeah. Because I said, if I dare, you know, you could still, you would still be up to the humanity. Listen, ladies, don't try that, yeah? Don't try this at home because you don't, you never know. The day when I, I got away from the chopper, the day, the pitch oil, the, 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 um, I, I have been hitting my head and, um, seeing stars. I remember we were in Tobago at time and he was angry. I and, and don't even know from zero to a hundred. I just twisted my neck. <gasps> I heard it. And I don't know that the angel of the Lord would have held him so that they would not have gone that far. Yeah. He cracked my neck. Like he twisted my neck. And I was like, and there's nothing, you know, but I, I again, there was a fear in him also to lose me mm -hmm. so that he would do so much and still try it. but you never know when the that yeah. that spirit of yeah. evil will yeah. totally Take let mm -hmm. yeah and i could have been dead so i the day when i when i left i got up that morning the night before i begged them i said do you have anything for me to do for you before i leave for work school was opening I said, do you have anything? Because every time I am ready to go back out to work, it would always be an issue. Do you have anything? Yes, let, I'm good. Let, let me ask you this before we go to how we move on. What, what was your mindset like at school? You, uh, oh my, that was my, my, my work experience. God gave me that to save me, to keep me going. If I did not have that experience, yeah. and that's, that's like, he asked me to leave that job a million times in a day. Because he knew when I left that job that yeah, he would. Depend on me. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. If he gave me a hundred dollars today, tomorrow he asked back for it. Hmm. If he gave me, um, if he gave me money, he will ask back for it. And he will ask back for it nicely, you know, when we want to go there. Hmm. But I remember, um, the work that I did, um, working with the young people, I think I was one of the most passionate um, persons that you can ask for because it meant so much to me to have that job, to, mm -hmm. to be working with young people, to tell them that you can make it, to, 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 to speak life. And all the time, the only person who was speaking life was the Holy Spirit into my life because yeah. I was hearing a lot of negatives, a lot of negatives. He was saying a lot of negatives, horrible things. And I remember people would see me, um, come in and, um, I said she's good at what she's, but they, they didn't understand that that was life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, it, 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 I, I depended on that so much, you know. And I mean, it, the job has blessed me because I mean I've been promoted and promoted and stuff like that. Because in all that was taking place, God was He was He was still allowing me to use the gifts that He had given yeah. to me. The I wanted so much to give love. That he allowed me to give love to the young people. Yeah. I wanted so much to, to say positive words that he allowed me to say that to them. Mm. I wanted so much to, to please him. But I was so, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I don't want to get emotional. But I, 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 I feel like I disappointed him. I should have listened if I had done it differently. But the fact that I did it this one, it was, he saved me. Yeah. 
my experience should help someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, would you believe my staff, out of 50, is about 45 of them are females. So when they speak, I have an understanding that is different. Yeah. Women don't always see what's happening with them. Mm. We put one at the show True. because we have to keep our self-respect and our dignity. There are some women who will tell everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. They will stand up over the, they, But there, there are some women who won't. Yeah. And I think that experience would have helped me to have a sixth sense about um, you know, saying something, but something. I know, yeah, yeah. you know, saying something. And strange enough, eh, I, they made me women's ministry leader. And um, when that happened, I was like, I shouldn't say they, but God. Mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, is this an opportunity to do things in a help woman? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. because, because, because even in the church, yeah. There are things happening. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I should be saying it, but the but reality it is, it is yeah, what it, it is. is. Yeah, it is. Right? Because people are unequal you. You know, I often say that God allows us individually to go through some things. Mm -hmm. And at the point in time, we're not even realizing, we are not realizing that it's to help somebody else. Yeah, it's divine plan. Yeah, and even though you have been through that, you are able to help women in women's ministry. You're able to help women on why we believe. You know, and God has really kept you. He has. He has really kept you, and I thank you, Lord, for that. But I want to get in now to how did you come yes, out of it? it? How? I just want to tell you, Sister Rhonda, I, I wanted to kill my... I wanted to kill myself one time, you know. I mean, like, not one time, like, many times. Like, people will say, like, the, 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 you know, the evil forces will come and say, you will never, ever get out of this. Mm. The only way that you're going to get out of this is if you kill him or he kills you. And I remember mm -hmm. after one of his drunken super, he finished and he gets on and so on. I remember and he's snoring on the bed. I took the pillow mm. and I rested on his head. And I pressed it and I held it and I, I, I see him struggling, struggling, struggling and I know um, he can go. And I just stopped and I started to cry. I was like, Lord, and I, I remember, Lord, constrain me, hold yeah, me back. Yeah. Look where I have reached, oh Lord. But God, no, I wasn't going to do it. I, I, I don't have killing arms. Mm -hmm. I don't have that, that killer instinct. But I, 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 I held it, held it. And I'm seeing his, his, his stomach going up and down. I started to go faster. And then I, I hear any songs on the yeah, pillow. Yeah. And I stopped and I just, I just broke down and I cried. And I was like, Lord, this have to end, Lord. And I remember that day he saw me. Always, I'm always, he, 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 he follows me around. <laughs> and I, he saw me speaking to someone. And he said many things. Because I remember the first time it was like in, in public, he he a, a friend passed and said, um, hi from school, a guy. And he was like, Who's that? And I would get a lot of that. I mean, I didn't bring that into the conversation, yeah. but I would have got a lot of yeah, that. Of who's course. that? Somebody passed and the lights of a car flashed, like, who's that? Yeah. That's to be for I, you. You have no idea who that is. And I have no <laughs> idea. Right? It could be the car behind me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So and I saw that that. I was telling you, yeah, and I saw that 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 rotted thing, and I'm not going to be dealing with it eh? because we used to see a, we, 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 he was a kind of person who loved to go to restaurants and mm -hmm. loved to go to the hotels and so on. We'd go on um, for a weekend, and it will always end bad. Uh, yeah. It will always end with him in the middle of the road coming down the highway with the intention to kill both of us. He really <laughs> didn't want it to die. And I remember that day, the first day of school. And I had asked him, I said, you want, you want me to do anything? That was the night before. You want me to do anything? Because I don't want to reach a work late. Because he would love for me to reach a work late. Hide the keys for the car, whatever, and so on. Um, to reach work late. So, nothing. He, no, 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 I got it. And the morning now, I'm getting ready to go to work. And he says, um, I want you to type out this for me. And I said, no. Hmm. And he said, um, I want you to type it out for me. And I said, no, I'm not typing anything. I asked you last night. I'm not typing anything. And I know what's going to happen, eh? but I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, type it out. 
He brings it and does like, no, no. And then he, he slams me into the wall. <laughs> Punches me. And I punch him back. No, we started with a punch, yeah? Mm -hmm. the, the first thing was a punch, a slap, mm -hmm. right? I That's didn't slap. tell you all that that slap and I, because I, I full of myself, I slap him back. He rain blows on me and that was, that was the warning to me that be careful with yes. this individual. So this time, again, I, and we kind of scramble and so on. All right, honey, you can't see the feet and, and that's not the feet, yeah, because I know when he comes mm -hmm. down, it's because More. he comes back like yeah. a same shot. Mm. So anyway, you know, I got ready and I went to work and um, I did my work. I think he must have called me on work, make sure on work and so on. And the afternoon now, I'm supposed to go back home. And I'm not doing this now. Hmm. I'm not doing this. Because I, I, I would, I would it more than more than all the things that I've gone through, out of the many places that I would have lived, out of the many, 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 did I say many, many places hmm. that I have lived? Six months, three months, one month, Jeez, and so on. Wow. And I remember I stopped packing, unpacking the um, stuff. Yeah. I stopped unpacking. I stopped unpacking wares. Because I like to put away. I love, mm -hmm. I know as women, we love to put away. I stopped, un I stopped packing, unpacking. And I said, I'm not going. And um, I did reach back home. And, and as I drove into the gate, he opened the gate for me and I stopped and I reversed the car and I drove out and I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going. I just drove out of the yard and I know um the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, don't go there. And um at the time I had an administrative assistant um and she, we were close. I, um, they would have seen his temperament. Mm -hmm. They would have known no. of his temperament, but they would not. They would not have known that I was. I was getting mm -hmm. beaten and stuff mm -hmm. and whatnot. Take off the beaten part there. Yeah. Hit something more sophisticated, <laughs> right? And I remember I was. They, she she knew that I was in a in a, in a, a domestic um violent situation. Yeah. And um, the first time I had gone by her was that Sunday. She had been inviting me, inviting me, move on over to come and I, I never did. Right? And I went home by her and, you know, we, that Sunday and thing. And I remember when I drove out of there, I picked up the phone and I said, girl, girl. And she said, come. And I, and I was like, maybe that was why I went that day yeah. before. Yeah. She said, come. And everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. And everything was okay. Mind you, I have to say this, that I um, I was stalked and stalked. But because it also had this law um, arrangements involved, no, no, because we were, because he was sued and they were looking for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't find him. And they found me. Mm -hmm. He now was on the run. Right. But I was always running from him. him. He was running from me. He never wanted me to know where he was because right. I would I would have said it to them. Lord and I remember day when it was so much. I remember going to pay the lawyer um one one of the at the end of the month and I remember um sobbing and crying and crying and sobbing. And um just saying, Lord, you know, I know you will work it out. That's how many years now, eh? But I remember one thing in particular. I had a a trading officer who became a consultant with the company. And I remember him saying to me, we were kind of close, we would talk and think. Um, he passed away now, a eh, little gentleman. And I said, um, this is so hard. Why, why do I have to go through this? This is so hard. I have to go pay this money every And you know what he said to me? He said, girl, you know, thank you. If you were not paying that money, if you did not, you are paying for him to stay away from you. I said, because he would have been all up in, in your business, he would have been all over, all in your workplace, all over, mm. right? So that because they were looking for him, yeah, 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 and I would have been the person who would have, yes, put him arm yeah. before them. You got he had to run in. from me. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, "That small thing, yeah. pay that." And 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 I said, um, I said, but I'm going to pray my way because he keep coming, he keep coming, and I wanted to, I wanted um to see him. 
before he died in the sense like you know i wanted to see him in good whole person mm -hmm. i don't have to say um like tina turner i don't know <laughs> i don't know to say that you know like what's love gonna do with yeah. it anyway i said um i wanted i wanted to see him but god didn't want it that for me mm -hmm. but my brother drank Amazon and i'm closing it off mm -hmm. now but he drank Amazon. I attempted to go see him about two or three times. We, as a family, the girls, mm -hmm. and every time we would get, we wouldn't get taxis or whatnot. God didn't want that um, yeah. embellished, not embellished. Yeah. Good. Um, he didn't want that marked on my he mind. Didn't he didn't want mind. that tattooed in mm -hmm. my mind. He didn't want that for me. Mm -hmm. And I think I wasn't supposed to see him yeah. because I looked and I looked. And yes, I would if I had seen him. I would have handed him over to the police. I would have. So I'm just saying to. The families, um, I think my brothers, one of my brothers in particular would have heard and he tried to assist and it was too early in the game. I should have um, taken that and taken his help. But I'm saying it also speaks to, 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 to us as, uh, as, uh, as women. You know, we always feel that we choose, you know, <laughs> but you think that you chose um your wife for well, that maybe so she chose you mm -hmm. because at the end of the day if you didn't say yes he can now um, yeah have this beautiful wife you i know? like you so that um <laughs> be careful you know just be careful stay close to god if yeah. you are in the, the he is the full of safety mm -hmm. if you are close to him and his holy spirit is speaking to you listen mm -hmm. if there's a if there's a inkling of doubt don't go mm -hmm. But I reach there and say, no, I don't think. And nobody yeah. should push anybody to do that, you know? So I just want to thank God for the opportunity. And I pray that God continue to bless your ministry. To God, to God. And um, I thank God that he has brought me out. And he's allowing me to... Because I, I was baptized a few years ago. And um, I've been married and the opposite of what I would have, a person who loves the Lord mm -hmm. and Bless who respects me, loves me, respects me. And he could not have loved me the way I needed to be loved if he didn't love the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I heard God calling me by my name, Jillian, and saying to me, just before COVID had come into place, um, saying to me, Jillian, what are you doing with this time? Yes, you know, we, we went through some stuff together, but you need to get back on the path. I heard him clearly. speaking to me as clearly as we were talking here mm -hmm. right now. And um, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything except do a surrender myself. Yeah. I felt like I was not whole mm -hmm. without him. Amen. And I said, Lord, here am I and here am I. So good, I thank you, Lord. Glory. So God be the glory. You still want to ask her? Yeah, well, you go ahead and ask her. Jillian, we, we would still ask you the question, even though you have said all of that. Why does Jillian believe? Hmm. Oh my God. Why do I believe? Huh. How could I not believe when hmm. God would have taken me through all of this and I've come out on the other side better for it? Yeah. How can I not believe when I would have heard him clearly? speaking to me when he would have sent persons in my path even along the way to you know to do things for me to to say come you're safe here mm -hmm. how can i not believe how can i not believe because i i feel like i feel like job i feel like joseph i feel like joseph i always go back to that thought buried and then um you know mm. Buried in that, 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 that hole and then take note and go on across there and go yeah. through all the mess and stuff. I feel like I came out of Egypt. I came out of the crucible and I felt that he was with me every step of the way because there were many, many times that I could have died. There were many, many times. And here am I now. And uh, I hear him speaking so clearly. You know, sometimes I, I want to, I feel like I don't do enough. I don't say enough. I know there's a level of conservativeness inside of me that he wants to, 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 to have me just, you know, break out of and just say and not be ashamed and not be afraid. And I, I thank God 
that he gave me this opportunity not to glorify myself. I am nothing. Yeah. But with him, I am everything. I yes. love the Lord. He is here. He's here even in this space, I believe, because he, he has saved me. And he says that we should make disciples of men. And he has given me the opportunity to speak. And so I will, um, I will speak. Amen. I thank you that you are doing this thing, allowing um, some of us who would not normally say, um, you know, share the speech. And then we thank you. We thank you for, you know, allowing the Lord to use you. Because so many women go through situations like this. Yeah. And stay silent. Yeah. So we thank you for allowing the Lord to use you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sister Jillian Adams. Yes, sir. Grew up in a home with strict parents, ensure that they attended church at all times. At age 14, despite climbing all the trees and picking all the fruits and doing all these boy things. <laughs> At age 14, she gave her life to Christ. Yes. Built on a solid foundation. Though she may have had that temptation, that pull, God kept her. Kept her firm and standing strong for about eight years. The enemy, brethren, I must let you know that the enemy knows exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. And it's only a matter of time if you are not truly focused. Yeah. He will deceive. There he sent mm -hmm. this charmer mm -hmm. with sweat off her feet. Mm -hmm. Flags came up, not just white flags or green flags, but red flags came up. And though she was so blinded, got caught up with the wrong individual. Though she was serving God, God had his hand on her. It's so important that you always remain in the hands of the potter. Because when you are in the hands of the potter, he can rebuild you. Amen, amen. amen. Dear Jillian faced 20 years hmm. of abuse. Some may ask a question, well, why you wait so long? All I have to say is, sometimes we end up in situations not realizing where God is or how God is holding on to you for a reason. You have heard her testimony. She have asked so many times to, to, to come out of this situation. She even thought of killing herself. But God kept her yeah. for a reason. She prayed every time to come out of this situation. God just held on to her. And at the right time, she was released. Mm -hmm. The lessons to you, or the lesson to you today, mm -hmm. be cautious of these red flags mm -hmm. when entering into relationships. Yeah. Here she is now, an educator, Mm. Even a drama queen <laughs> led by God. Mm. Brothers and sisters, I will end by saying this whole testimony reminds me of a sermon broken for betterment. Amen. And as I have said earlier on, when you remain in the hands of the potter, yeah. he can reshape, mm. renew, and rebuild you yeah. to the person 
that he needs you to be. Amen. She has learned so many things. And here she is today to encourage some young woman mm -hmm. or even some grown woman yeah. of the situations. Again, you have heard all forms of abuse. Mm -hmm. But she's here to ensure that you know when these flags come up, it's time to get out. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, you have heard a testimony, mm. or this testimony of Sister Jillian Adams, may, how God may, truly kept her may, may all I add, this time. May I add, he not only kept her, he gave her a wonderful husband. <laughs> you know, yeah, one who's yeah. sitting here very calmly. And, you know, while, while she's speaking, I'm, I'm seeing his, his facial expression. Like he's, he's talking mm -hmm. while she's talking, you know. And I, I am happy that even though she went through all of that, God placed a man in your life, a God-fearing man. To take you through the rest of the years. Amen. And we say, bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Points to note with that one. Though you may be going through your storm, mm -hmm. never let go of the hand of God. Amen. And he rewarded her hundredfold. Amen. <laughs> and this is why she believes. Mm -hmm. The word of God says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the, by the blood, blood of the, the lamb, lamb and, and by, by the word of their, their testimony. testimony. Let's pray. Hmm. Oh, Father in heaven, we just want to give you thanks and praise again for sparing another life. Yes, sir. For bringing a a beautiful woman to testify mm. of the challenges that she had. Yeah. To testify of your greatness in her life. Amen. Father, though she may have went through so many things, you have never let go of her hand. Mm -hmm. You have protected her. You have guided her. And here she is being able or having the ability to testify of your greatness in her life, to help some young woman or mm. some elder or elderly woman mm. in a situation similar to hers. Yes. Lord, I just want to thank you for even giving her the strength, yeah. the courage to stand in the midst of this storm. I thank you for even allowing her to come and speak to us today mm. and they even show that in the midst of all of this that you can reward hundredfold thank you Lord. you have truly blessed her with a handsome husband and one that truly uh replicates what it means to be a godly husband mm -hmm. so father today I ask that you will continue to bless their marriage yes, in every which way. Father, as we continue in prayer, oh God, we bring the financial situation before you. Yes. Uh, Father, she's paying a debt that hmm. it was not her own. But Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, as I pray, and as persons out there see this testimony yes, and Lord. they pray, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on Jillian. Amen. Set her free from yes, being captive, O oh God, of yes, this debt. Yes. And Lord, let your will be done. We thank you, we honor you, we glorify and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Amen.